Welcome to the FAA's informal meeting on the proposed modifications of Class Charlie airspace surrounding Luis Munoz Marine International Airport. We're glad you could join us for this virtual meeting event. I'm Andres Davis, Airspace and Procedures South Team Manager at the FAA, and will be your moderator for today's meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to ask for comments on the proposed airspace changes. Please note that the proposed airspace modifications will not affect the number of aircraft in the area or the flight paths aircraft fly today. These modifications are designed to delineate Class Charlie and Class Delta with Luis Munoz Marine Airport Tower, Isla Grande Tower, and San Juan Center Radar Approach Control. The proposed modification will increase safety and reduce the risk of conflict between aircraft. Here's our agenda. The meeting will start with the FAA's detailed presentation of the proposed change to Luis Munoz Class Charlie airspace, followed by presentations and comments from the attendees who registered in advance to speak. Afterwards, our panel of experts will host a live question and answer session, responding to your questions submitted on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. We'll then adjourn this meeting with brief closing remarks. For those of you who are joining us on Zoom, your microphones are muted and cameras are off. To submit a question during the question and answer session, please enter your written question in the question and answer tab on the Zoom platform. If you're attending this meeting on one of our social media channels, please click on the question and answer link in the comments section to be directed to our Google form. You can also post your question directly in the comments thread. If you're having technical issues connecting to the virtual meeting, you can text our technical support team at 949-478-0253 at any time during the workshop. This phone number is for text messages for technical support only. The FAA will be collecting comments on this proposal, so we encourage you to join the conversation. Please note, submitting a question during the live question and answer session is not the same as providing a formal written comment. To do so, you may mail them to the FAA at 1701 Columbia Avenue, College Park, Georgia 30337, or via email to the address shown on the screen. All written formal comments must be sent by Tuesday, March 28, 2023. You can also visit our website shown on the screen for more information about the project. Next, you will hear from several air traffic controllers from San Juan with an overview of San Juan airspace. Hi, I am Arlan Diaz, Operations Supervisor at Luis Muñoz Marin International Airport. The next few slides provide a basic overview of the airport and its surrounding airspace. Luis Muñoz Marin International Airport, also known as San Juan International Airport, was originally built in 1955 and is located three miles southeast of downtown San Juan. During the first year of operations, the airport handled over 694,000 passengers and 28 million pounds of cargo. Today, San Juan International Airport is the busiest airport in the Caribbean, handling over 5 million passengers as of August 2022, which is approximately 21,000 daily passengers. Air traffic at the airport was on the rise before the pandemic and is back to pre-pandemic levels. Today, the airport is served by over 20 airlines and has approximately 400 daily operations. The runways at Luis Muñoz Marin International Airport were built to align with the prevailing wind direction in the area. To operate safely, aircraft typically take off and land into the wind. You will see numbers on the runway. Those numbers indicate the compass heading the aircraft is facing as it lands or takes off. For example, you will see runway 826, which is 80 degrees in one direction and 260 degrees in other direction. The selection of the runway in use is managed by FAA air traffic control and is dependent on wind direction and other operational factors. At Luis Muñoz Marin International Airport, air traffic control provides services 24 hours per day. There are a number of smaller airports in the vicinity of Luis Muñoz Marin International Airport. These airports include Isla Grande Airport, which is one of the busiest general aviation airports in Puerto Rico. Located three miles west of Luis Muñoz Marin International Airport, 
Isla Grande Airport has one runway oriented east to west. The selection of the runway in use is managed by FAA air traffic control and is dependent on wind direction and other operational factors. At Isla Grande Airport, air traffic control provides services between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. However, the airport is open to aircraft 24 hours a day and aircraft operate at the airport while the control tower is closed. The FAA directs traffic through three-dimensional airspace, which is divided into airspace classes. The four primary categories of airspace are control, uncontrol, special use, and other. Control airspace includes classes Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. For our purposes today, we'll focus on class Charlie and class Delta. Class Charlie airspace can be modified to fit the needs of each airport. It is a segmented circle that typically extend from the surface to 4,000 feet above the airport's ground elevation. Lateral boundaries are up to five nautical miles surrounding the airport at the surface and up to 10 nautical miles at the outer rings. Radio communications with air traffic control must be established prior to entering this airspace. Class Delta airspace can also be modified to fit the needs of an airport. It is a cylinder center around an airport that extends from the surface up to 2,500 feet above the airport elevation. Lateral boundaries are unique and can be adjusted for each airport and their arrival and departure procedures. Hello, I'm Christopher Gray, an air traffic controller at Luis Munoz Marine International Airport. The following slides present graphics showing the current and proposed San Juan airspace. The FAA has studied the issue extensively and the following graphics are the result of detailed work to design the proposed airspace. This graphic shows the current airspace chart for Luis Munoz Marine International Airport, which is class Charlie, depicted by a solid magenta line, along with Isla Grande Airport, which is class Delta airspace and is depicted by a dash blue line. The current class Charlie airspace for Luis Munoz Marine International Airport has an airspace ceiling of 4,000 feet mean scene level, or MSL. The floor of the airspace varies. It starts around the ground surface close to the airport and further out starts between 1,200 feet and 2,800 feet MSL. The current class Delta airspace for Isla Grande Airport starts at surface and goes up to, but not including 1,200 feet. This graphic shows a proposed airspace chart for Luis Munoz Marine International Airport, which is class Charlie, depicted by the solid magenta line, along with Isla Grande Airport, which is class Delta airspace and is depicted by the dash blue line. The proposed airspace change includes changing the floor and ceiling altitudes of the existing class Charlie and class Delta airspace in the area highlighted on the graphic. This new area will be shared between class Charlie and class Delta airspaces. For class Charlie, the ceiling is proposed to stay at 4,000 feet MSL and the floor altitude is proposed to be at 1,200 feet MSL. For class Delta, the proposed altitude will stay up to, but not including, 1,200 feet MSL. So why are we making these changes? As shown on this graphic, the current class Charlie and class Delta airspace structure does not adequately address the traffic conflict that might arise when Isla Grande Airport control tower is closed and VFR aircraft departs Isla Grande and subsequently transitions eastbound to East Munoz class Charlie airspace. The class Charlie staff study showed aircraft departing Isla Grande Airport while the tower is closed are not able to establish two-way radio communication with Luis Munoz prior to entering the Class Charlie airspace. Two-way radio communication is required to maintain safe separation with other aircraft within Class Charlie airspace. This slide shows proposed Class Delta airspace. You can see the proposed airspace change highlighted in the light blue color on your screen towards the east of Isla Grande Airport. As we noted earlier, the control tower at Isla Grande is operational from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. These hours are expected to stay the same. Aircraft still land and take off from Isla Grande when that tower is closed. When the control tower is closed, air traffic control surfaces are not provided. Aircraft use visual guidance to maintain required safe separation from other aircraft, terrain, and clouds. Aircraft then fly directly to Class Charlie airspace that we will show you in the next graphic. Expanding the airspace towards the east will allow aircraft more time to establish communication with Luis Munoz Marine Airport Tower before entering Class Charlie airspace. This board shows the proposed Class Charlie and Class Delta airspace. You can see the proposed airspace change highlighted in light blue color on your screen. 
aircraft flying in this section of airspace up to but not including 1,200 feet will now be part of Class Delta airspace. Aircraft flying at or above 1,200 feet and up to 4,000 feet will be part of Class Charlie airspace. With this proposed change, Luis Munoz Marine Tower can hand off aircraft at its ground date when the tower is open, which will enhance safety for aircraft transiting eastbound. In the following slides, I'll discuss the FAA's rulemaking and environmental review process. Any changes to Class Charlie airspace must go through the rulemaking process. Rulemaking is the process federal agencies use to make new regulations. Any proposed rule goes through numerous reviews and the public has the opportunity to review and comment on the proposed rule. The FAA is required to review and consider every comment. Once the agency has read and considered all comments, it decides whether to proceed with the final rule. The agency may adopt a final rule that is identical or similar to the initial proposal, or it might make changes based on the comments. This informal airspace meeting is a required critical part of the process that comes before the notice of proposed rulemaking. Before any changes can be made, the proposed rule must also go through an environmental review, which is required by the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. NEPA requires that the agency evaluate environmental and related socioeconomic effects of the proposed action. The review includes a preliminary technical review, a preliminary environmental review, an internal review, and choice of appropriate NEPA review, which could include extraordinary circumstances and significant impacts. Here is the FAA's general NEPA process for all projects. We're just about to begin the live portion of the meeting and the question and answer session with the expert panel. First, here is a summary of the next steps in the process. Comments will be accepted until March 28, 2023. The FAA will consolidate and review comments. The FAA will consider comments and incorporate pertinent modifications. The FAA will finalize the environmental review once the notice of proposed rulemaking has been published in the Federal Register, there will be a separate 60-day comment period. We encourage you to send your comments. You may do so by addressing them to the FAA via mail or via email to the address shown on the screen. Submit your comments no later than Tuesday, March 28, 2023. You can also visit our website shown on the screen for more information about the project. Today's meeting is being recorded and will be available on FAA's website for future viewing. Welcome to the FAA's informal airspace meeting. I'm Andres Davis, airspace and procedures team manager for the FAA's Southern Region, and I'll be your moderator this evening. We're holding this virtual public meeting to inform you, the community, about the FAA's proposal to modify the airspace over Luis Munoz Marine International Airport. The FAA considers making a change like this for safety. The plan will not change existing flight paths, and it will not be the cause of more flights over the area. For tonight's meeting, we have local air traffic controllers here to answer your questions. A live question and answer session with our panelists will begin in just a few minutes. But first, if you pre-registered via Zoom to make a presentation, your name will be called during this part of the meeting. Each presentation will be limited to three minutes. We will unmute each person when it is their turn to speak. Any use of inappropriate language will not be tolerated and will result in being placed back on mute immediately. This meeting will not be adjourned until everyone on the list has had an opportunity to address the panel. This meeting may be adjourned at any time if all persons present have had an opportunity to speak. We have a total of three pres uh, presenters registered for today's meeting. Our first presentation today is from Alexis Echevarria. Ms. Echevarria, welcome. You have three minutes to speak. You may begin your presentation. Okay. Uh, 
Ms. Echevarria couldn't make it today. And uh, we have another uh, presenter. And that presenter's name is Mr. Geraldo De Jesus. Mr. De Jesus, welcome. You have three minutes to speak. You may begin your presentation. Okay. Uh, Mr. No no tengo nada que comentar. Okay, thank you, Mr. De Jesus. Uh, we'll move on to the second presenter. Mr. Juan Antonio. Mr. Antonio, uh, welcome. You may start your uh, presentation. You have three minutes. Mr. Juan Antonio Rodriguez, are you on, sir? Um, I'm, I'm here. Sorry about that. Uh, I just got a, a lot of noise here around. Okay, welcome, Mr. Juan. Antonio Rodriguez, you have three minutes to speak. You may begin your presentation, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I just want to know uh, if I if I get it right, you, you guys are, are want to increase the class D airspace over Isla Grande. If so, how come do you do you gonna um, you you gonna ensure the safety of the air operations in the area. Okay, Mr. Uh, Antonio Rodriguez, uh, the question and answer session will be uh, right after this one. I appreciate your presentation, sir. Um, and I believe that is all that we have as far as presenters. I'm checking with my people in the back room. I assume uh, that is it. Perfect. That concludes the presentation for this evening. And now I would like to introduce our panelists. From the Lewis Munoz and Isla Grande Tower, along with the San Juan Center, we have four air traffic controllers on our panel today. Sonia Funones, Hello, Michelle Debao, Fernando Fuentes, and Carlos Barreto. Thank, you. Thank you, panel members. I appreciate you uh, attending. And for your participation today in this meeting, if you registered on the Zoom platform, please submit your questions on the question and answers tab. If you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, please submit your questions in the platform's chat area. Please keep in mind that questions asked during the webinar are not part of the official record of the San Juan Informal Airspace Workshop. To submit an official comment that becomes part of the public record, please use the link on the provide comments page of the website. If you're having technical issues, you can send a text message to 949-478-0253. And now to begin our meeting, during which I'll read questions out loud and give our panelists an opportunity to discuss. Before we begin reading the questions submitted, I would like the panel to speak just a little bit about the proposed modification to the Class C and D airspace and touch on some of the history regarding the change. The rulemaking process for an airspace change ensures that all stakeholders, which includes you, the public, are included in the process and have a role to play. We established a team of controllers 
some of which are here today, that have helped with their local knowledge and aviation expertise. That team authored the staff study, which was an extensive report of data and analysis. Uh, Fernando, would you like to offer any information pertaining to the uh, proposed change? Uh, thank you, Andres, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, this uh, informal meeting. Um, yeah, this, uh, there were several safety web webinars uh, since uh, 2021. Uh, probably some of you here today um, had attended to uh, some of those uh, seminars that uh, are mostly done in conjunction with uh, flight standards and uh, air traffic control with the uh, local uh, flying community. Um, in uh, December 2021, an IHA committee uh, was created uh, with the goal of taking in consideration all the uh, interests of the uh, flying community, especially with the uh, small operators. Um, for us as air traffic control, um, we're service industry and our customers are the uh, owners and uh, aircraft operators. Um, us as controllers, um, the most important thing for us is to get uh, our customer, in this case pilots, being able to communicate with us in a timely manner, in a safety order, and uh, for us to keep them um, uh, separately correctly and provide the best service uh, we can. So all of this was taken in consideration by the committee and uh, great uh, recommendations uh, came from it. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you for that history and thank you for that information. And now we'll move on to the questions. Thank you for submitting them. Uh, just a reminder, reminder uh, on Facebook and Twitter, use the chat portion. Um, to provide your comments. Off to the first one. The first question has to do with Class Delta airspace, and I'm gonna ask Carlos uh, to answer it. So Carlos, what happens to Class D airspace when Isla Grande Tower is closed? Hey, thanks, Andres, and uh, good afternoon, all the panelists and all the uh, general aviation pilots uh, in this meeting. When Isla Grande Tower is closed between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m., the tower air traffic service are not provided. However, there's still aircraft can land and take off from Isla Grande. So Isla Grande Class Delta becomes a class golf airspace operating on the common traffic advisory frequency. So aircraft departing Isla Grande flying directly into San Juan Class Charlie airspace. This will span the class Delta airspace and go golf airspace towards the east and will allow aircraft more time to establish communication with San Juan Tower before entering the Class Charlie or avoid the Class Charlie turning to the north. Very nicely put, Carlos. I appreciate that. Uh, the next question, what is the penalty for violating Class Charlie airspace? Now that falls under the uh, Code of Federal Regulations. And if you operate contrary to uh, 14, uh, CFR Part 91.130, that's uh, one of those articles in the Code of Federal, Reg Federal Regulations. Uh, it'll be investigated by the Flight Standards Office, and penalties could be an administrative or enforcement action, depending on the outcome of the investigation. Thank you for that question. I'll move on to a question about the airspace change, Sonia. Uh, why do we need this airspace change? Great question. Um, hello, Andresi. Um, there was a last Charlie staff study conducted due to the uh, instance in which um, airplanes that were departing Isla Grande Tower while the tower was closed, they were not always establishing two-way radio communications with the San Juan Tower prior to entering Class Charlie airspace. So uh, this is why uh, this airspace, is, airspace change is, is needed. 
it will enhance the safety by allowing Isla Grande departures to avoid entering the Class Charlie airspace and give more miles to establish communications with San Juan Tower um, in case they do need to enter the San Juan Class Charlie airspace. Um, this additional level of safety um, will not only reduce the amount of conflicts between an aircraft in the vicinity, but it will also mitigate risk. Well put, Sonia. The different layers of safety, helping out with the transition from Isla Grande uh, to San Juan. Um, very, very nicely put. Thank you. Uh, air traffic controller support. Michelle, I'm going to ask you if you'll this question. Uh, do air traffic controllers support this proposal? Hello, Andres, uh, and everyone that's connected. Uh, I have to say yes. Uh, as experts in the local air traffic, and we have been uh, part of this process with the communication and the predictability that uh, exists in Class Charlie, we fully expect that we will be able to provide better service to our aircraft uh, in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Carlos, I have a question again about the uh, Isla Grande Tower. Will this airspace change impact hours of operation for Isla Grande Control Tower? No, Andres, no changes. Uh, these changes will not expect no changes on the regular operation hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, thank you. And thank you for the question. We'll move on to question for Sonia. How will you add, how will you ensure the safety of the area operations in the area? Okay, so um, how will the FAA improve the safety? Well. All procedures are put into very rigorous um, safety review before they take they are put in place. Um, and in developing the proposed airspace design, we have considered other other examples of the airspace classification around around the national airspace system with similar traffic makeup. Um, and we have learned from them in order to implement this cha this this change, um, which we believe. It will keep the airspace safe, um, helping us provide better service within the Class Charlie airspace of San Juan. Remember, the FAA's first priority is always safety. Right. And we'll hear that over and over again. Safety, safety, safety. Uh, every one of the panel members, along with the rest of the FAA, our mission is safety first. Uh, along with efficiency. So if I heard you correctly, Sonia, no operations um, will change. Yep, uh, no operations will change. Um, we're not changing any procedures. So the proposed change is to the airspace class um, only. Um, and the corner in between the Isidro Grande and San Juan, as it was presented before on that uh, presentation we saw at the beginning. Um, and there is just that little shelf that will be now part of Isidro Grande Airport, um, Isidro Grande's airspace. Um, it will now mirror the same procedures. We do the same, the same thing that we do during the day um, will be conducted at night when Isla Grande Tower is closed. Okay, well put. Thank you, Sonia, I appreciate that. All right, it's, this is a question uh, sent in. Uh, how could this affect us when generating routes to San Juan? How could this change affect us when generating routes? Uh, Fernando, uh, would you like to take that question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, there is not going to be any um, changes in the uh, way uh, we operate today, nor, nor for the uh, routing changes. So there is a, in flight procedures per se, there's not going to be any change. 
Thank you, Fernando. What you filed today will remain the same. Is that did I hear you correct there, Fernando? That's correct. That's correct. That no changes in the way pilot files, dispatcher files, uh, everything remains the same. It basically is uh, the only thing that's going to be changing is uh, BFR procedures within Class Charlie and Delta Airspace. Thank you, Fernando. Okay. There's a question about uh, what we're doing today. Um, and why can't we just leave it alone? Uh, so Sonia, uh, <laughs> let's field this question here. Why can't the FAA leave operations the way they are now? All right. Um, that's always a good question. Um, we have proposed a new airspace um, change to improve safety and efficiency, right? In and around the San Juan class Charlie airspace. Um, this help, this change will definitely help mitigate non-participating aircraft um, flying inadvertently into San Juan class Charlie when Isra Grande Airport is closed. And we don't want that occurring anymore. Um, so this is why this change is being proposed. Okay, thank you, Sonia. And airspace changes uh, happen occasionally throughout the national airspace system, uh, but it, it, it all goes through a pretty deliberate process. Um, it doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. And it's typically to enhance uh, the safety of the operation. Um, so it, it's a dynamic situation. Thank you, Sonia, I appreciate that. Here's a question posed about local pilots. Uh, Carlos, this may be a perfect one for you. Uh, what education will be given to the local pilots on how to navigate this new airspace? Yes, Andres. I want to emphasize what uh, Sonia indicated. We want to mirror what it, the, the operations between the class Delta airspace is being conducted in the class Golf airspace. So in accordance with the FAA 700.2, which covers the airspace it changes. Uh, that requires after issuing a final designation of the class Charlie Airspace users, uh, I inquire, I require to, to conduct publicized implementation of education within the changes of the class Charlie Airspace. Uh, they want the pilot, the FA wants all the pilots to have the tools necessary to safely navigate within the national air, airspace system. And I will take effort during the implementation phase to advise the change and educate pilots within San Juan and Isla Grande. Well put, Carlos. Thank you, sir. And thanks again for that question, uh, community member, uh, along with the next person who submitted a question. Has the San Juan Tower class Charlie surface area Altitude change has that surface area changed in a class Charlie at San Juan today. Uh, Michelle, uh, has there been a change to the surface area altitude in San for San Juan Tower? Oh uh, yes, yeah, surface uh, to four thousand, and in May of twenty twenty two. And we see the uh, slide has been brought up uh, and it's illustrating the current change uh, that's being proposed. Um, the change we're talking about today is on the Northwest corner of San Juan's uh, surface area. So uh, there has been some uh, changes over time, but for this particular one, uh, it, it's to the northwest portion of San Juan Tower. Thank you for that question. And uh, thank you, Michelle. Next question posed. Is the FAA conducting an environmental review to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act? Now, that answer is yes. Uh, for everything that we introduce into the uh, national airspace system, uh, there's, of course, the safety component, and there's also a consideration for 
the impact posed on the uh, communities. So the FAA has reviewed the potential environmental impacts associated with this proposed airspace change, like we do with each airspace change we uh, introduce into the national airspace system. The FAA uh, will review the input from the public, complete the National Environmental Policy Act process prior to implementation of the proposed airspace change. So yes, and this is part of that process. Thank you for that question. Next question. Uh, I think I'm gonna need the slide for this uh, and I'm gonna ask Carlos to help me out. Uh, Carlos? Yes. Uh, what exactly are the changes for Isla Grande Airport? And when a pilot should establish communication with San Juan Tower, or should a pilot establish communication with San Juan Tower if Isla Grande is not in operation? Yes, Andres. Actually, the current operations for the class Delta and the class Gulf airspace that uh, we mentioned before, during the class Gulf airspace, that extension of two miles doesn't longer uh, uh, is owned by Isla Grande airspace. It'll, it'll convert with it the class Charlie airspace, and that class Charlie airspace ends on the departure of runway niner for Isla Grande. And that creates a, a challenge. And uh, if we actually go into deep, it's a, it's a, it will take additional, it will take, it requires additional consideration for the pilots departing in La Grande. With this change and uh, mirroring the class Delta and the class Gulf airspace, it will, it will have time, sufficient time for those pilots going eastbound to establish communication with San Juan or at the center. And uh, so that, that two miles also will provide this distance to avoid it if you're not going eastbound. So that require that, that requirement will, uh, will benefit the pilots departing from Isla Grande to someone or going uh, northbound to avoid it. Very nicely put, Carlos. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, just a reminder, keep all those questions coming in uh, via Facebook, Twitter, um, and we're also live on social media. So the next question, it involves the airlines, and I'm gonna pose this question to Sonia. Sonia, are you making this airspace change so the airlines can operate more flights? Well, um, thank you for the question, Ingresi, and uh, everyone out there. Um, the proposed airspace change will definitely um, not increase the demand um, at, at either airport. Um, the FAA is, is not responsible um, for the demands of the market when it comes to how many airplanes there are. Our job is to safely manage the system as a whole, right? So um, therefore, what this airspace change will do is that it will enable us air traffic controllers to better manage air traffic, not in reality increase, or we're not looking for to increase any amount of traffic into either airport. In, into either airport. Um, we designed the airspace to allow flights to safely and more efficiently um, arrive at and depart from San Juan and Isla Grande. Um, it is not designed again to accommodate a higher number of flights. Thank you for that, Sonia. Uh, we manage and the, the, in, the number of aircraft isn't something we necessarily uh, can control. Uh, I got that. Thank you. All right. When do you expect to have this class Charlie modification uh, in effect? Uh, the quick answer is there's no a specific timeline currently established for uh, any airspace change. There are some parts of the process that have some specific timelines associated with it. This is the start of one, which includes the notice of proposed rulemaking, uh, which is 60 days to allow the public to provide uh, their input. But those phases could take years to complete depending on the input from the public uh, the, 
uh, the input from the aviation community. If there's a need to further adjust the design based on feedback, uh, we would go back and communicate that to the, uh, the specialists involved for safety and environmental, along with the community. So there is no timeline because it's a deliberate process and we make that modification. We wanna make it as uh, correct as possible. Thank you for that question. On to the next question. Uh, safety issues towards, okay. Have there been safety issues already with planes flying out of Isla Grande? Sonia, can you help me out with that question? Have there been any safe, have there been safety issues already with planes flying out of Isla Grande? Um, sure, of course, I, I will go ahead and, and help you out with this one. Um, pilots have expressed confusion when departing from runway niner at Isra Grande, when Isra Grande Tower is, is closed. Um, and their responsibility, of course, of establishing two-way radio communications um, prior to entering Class Charlie San Juan, Class Charlie airspace. Um, if, a pilot, if a pilot departs westbound, for example, and remains clear of the Class Charlie airspace, there is um, no need um, to communicate with um, San Juan Tower at that time, but in case they do, um, will ex extend in east a little bit, then they would have to definitely contact this uh, one tower prior to entering our class charlie airspace. So hope that answers the question there. It did. And we're touching on uh, a similar question. Uh, and I'll throw this one to Michelle. And some of what uh, Sonia mentioned, you'll probably repeat. Uh, because of the change, now when you're flying at night at Isla Grande, does the pilot need to establish communications with San Juan Tower? Uh, yes, uh, Andres. Uh, a pilot will need to establish uh communication only if flying eastbound on a VFR published transition through Class Charlie. If a pilot departs westbound, for example, there remains and remains clear of Class Charlie airspace, there is no need to establish to radio communication. So if, if an aircraft is departing uh, east, period, uh, it, is the answer still would they have to contact Sam One Tower. Yes. Okay, so that's got it. And you mentioned the BFR is visual flight rules. It's seeing, be seen uh, in the air, basically like driving a car in the air. Um, so west, no. East, yes. Got it. Thank you, Michelle. All right. A uh, question for Fernando. Will I see aircraft flying new routes that have not been flown in the past? Your answer is no. Um, like I mentioned before, there is no, no flight procedures being amended. Um, so no, there will be no implementation of new flight procedures in the area. Basically, the, the intent of our traffic control, not only in the, this airspace, in all our space, is to be able to establish um, two-way radio communication in order to predict what the pilots want to fly, where they're going, and us be able to provide the best service uh, we can provide to them. So the answer is no, no changes in new procedures. Got it, thank you, Fernando. All right, uh, thank you for continuing to submit those questions uh, in the chat section of uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and thank you for attending this live uh, session. I'll move on to the next question. 
uh, how long will it take for the sectional charts to be updated? And will communication frequencies be changed or remain the same? Now the sectional chart uh, will be uh, updated and available the same day that this change goes into effect. Uh, one of the things that we uh, do as part of the process, we submit everything in time so that when the change hits the streets or it hits those maps, uh, everyone has been prepared uh, and the applicable frequencies are, are uh, submitted to the public. Uh, but the FAA will do more public outreach prior to the airspace being modified. The communication frequencies will remain the same. So there'll be more conversation with the communities, uh, both aviation uh, and non-aviation prior to this change. And the communication frequency should, uh, they will be uh, exactly the same. Uh, the next question, is this change, will this change be included in the VFR or visual flight rules area chart? Yes, all charts depicted in this Lagrande class Delta and San Juan class Charlie will be updated. All right. Fernando, uh, I'd like you to help me out with this next question. Would the change influence the regular departure and arrival procedures and the traffic patterns for runway 826 while Isla Grande Tower is operating? Again, uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, no, no changes to the uh, traffic pattern on Isla Grande on uh, both runway 8 and 26. Uh, no, no changes on the uh, flow of traffic. No change, no change, no change. Safety, safety, safety. We're yes. saying a lot of that over and over again. Uh, okay, great. Thank you, Fernando. All right. Uh, this next question is uh, it involves separation standards. And uh, Michelle, I think you're the right person for this question. Will this airspace change allow aircraft to fly closer? Oh, the answer to that is no. Separation standards will not change. The proposed airspace change will enable aircraft uh, departing if I got to the east to avoid Clash Charlie airspace, if desired, when the East Lagrande Tower is closed, as we said before. And aircraft will be able to ensure communication with San Juan Tower sooner before entering Class Charlie. And uh, air traffic procedures have required separation standards, and we will design the airspace to comply with those requirements. Thank you, Michelle. The next question has to do with the design, uh, and it's for Isla Grande. So, Carlos, why is the ceiling of the class delta not being considered to be extended as well? Oh, yes, uh, Andres. Um, no uh, expected changes is on the ceiling. The current uh, change is just on the extension to the east of Isla Grande. So it doesn't have any impact or safety concerns with the ceiling of the class Delta or cla class golf airspace. Okay, thank you, Carlos. The next question. Are airplanes getting louder or quieter? Uh, well, if they're right over your house, probably louder, right? But uh, in the case of new aircraft, all new aircraft are more efficient and quieter. Uh, that goes into the thought process when aircraft are being designed nowadays. And the FAA's Office of Environment and Energy has worked with more than 50 years, worked for more than 50 years with the air carriers and the manufacturers to reduce noise at the source, uh, the aircraft engines. Extensive information is available at FA.gov and you can search for Office of Environment and Energy. And there's plenty of information there to show our partnership uh, with industry in helping making Aircraft engines quiet. We're considering that. Thank you for that question. And we'll move on to the next question. 
and it has to do with student pilots. Carlos, if you can help me with this question, what will the impact be on student pilots? Can it be expected to see a reduction in flight training? Andres, there's no anticipated change on the number of uh, flights for the students uh, operating in Isla Grande. The airspace has been designed with the training, uh, flight training in mind, and he's been cha uh, shaped to accommodate all types of flight operation that takes place today in Isla Grande. The student pilots will have the same requirement to enter and operate within the airspace as well as the other pilots operating within the class Delta class golf airspace. Okay, thank you. So no change, uh, no change. Only to airspace. <laughs> We're modifying class Charlie airspace. Okay, uh, this question has to do with uh, Isla Grande class Delta. Uh, Michelle, if you don't mind helping me with this question, how many miles east of the Isla of East La Grande, will the class Delta start? Over what area? Well, Andres, in uh, May of 2022, the San Juan Tower surface area changed from 2,000 feet to 3,000. The change uh, we are talking about today is on the northwest corner of San Juan surface area. However, the class Charlie surface area around San Juan is surface to 4,000 feet. Okay. And Carlos, how far out is your class Delta today? And uh, to, the, to the west of Isla Grande, just extend a 5.3 mile west of Isla Grande. We estimate with this change about 2.5 mile east of Isla Grande with a radius of 3.9 uh, radius, not including the, the section designated to the class Charlie. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate that. And just a quick reminder, uh, please continue submitting your questions. Uh, we're here to answer any question that you have and provide uh, feedback. Uh, also, you can submit those via Zoom, uh, Facebook, or via our social media. And we'll move on to the next question. Please continue with the questions. Will this change make any impact in the low offshore transitions? Sonia, can you help me out with this question? Will this change make any impact in the low shore, low offshore transitions? Of course, um, no, definitely no. Again, we are, the change is proposed to the airspace itself, the class Charlie airspace. Um, so no procedures and no routes will be changed or will be affect affected in regards to this airspace change. Thank you, Sonia. All right, uh, there's a question here. I think we might uh, benefit from uh, a slide we were using earlier. Can we bring up a slide uh, that shows the airspace? And Carlos, I'm gonna ask for your assistance, if you don't mind. Yes. All right, I see the slide up. And the question is, how will the airspace look with the changes? So take it away, Carlos. Yes, thank you, Andres. Actually, currently, uh, we still have some pilots uh, looking at the map during the class Delta and the class Golf airspace. And uh, we have a delegation of that airspace east of Isla Grande from San Juan Airport during the, while operating while the class Delta airspace. And that's why uh, we, we want to uh, establish the same airspace and uh, from the class Golf and the class, Charlie, uh, class Delta airspace so they don't get confused of the dimension of the airspace. And uh, the same concern they have during the night is the same concern the pilot had during the day and they assume that the class Charlie airspace extend to the departure of runway niner. And, uh, and since it's not depicted in the chart, 
want to have that established and uh, create more a safety a safety environment for pilots, uh, students, and everybody operating Instagram day. I don't know if that, uh, that answered the question, with Andres. Oh, it, it absolutely did. Uh, and just to expand a little bit on this uh, slide, um, I guess we could just read it, but uh, aircraft up to, but not including uh, 1,200 in that little blue area there, that's all yours. Uh, for Isla Grande. And like, uh, I, and like I mentioned, we have that extension 5.3 mile east, uh, west of Isla Grande, a radius of 3.9 radius, and then we estimating a 2.5 miles still uh, for that extension to the east of Isla Grande. Okay. All right, and the class uh, Delta it's all Isla Grande in the class. Charlie, uh, the Magenta line. Uh, Sonia, did you want to help me out with uh, that part? Just to explain a little bit about uh, the class Charlie. Sure, of course. Um, so the class Charlie airspace, as you can see, um, is comprised in different sections and portions, right? It, it will be the Magenta lines. So you have the inner portion, which was, would be the San Juan um, airport or San Juan Tower, um, operated and owned airspace. It will go from the surface up to uh, four, up to three thousand, and then four thousand will belong to uh, San Juan Approach. Then you have the other sectors around it, out, outside of the inner core. Um, the outer core will be from um, one thousand two hundred to four thousand, and then the other portions southeast would be 2,800 to 4,000, 1,700 to 4,000, and that would be um, belonging and that airspace will be operated by San Juan Approach. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Uh, just changing the airspace. No procedures. And it's all for safety. I appreciate uh, the back room for putting up the slide and we'll transition to the next question. And thank you, Carlos and Sonia. Uh, since we have you up, Sonia, do you mind answering one more question? Uh, and it has to do with terminal procedures. Will the terminal procedures be modified? No. Um, the ter terminal procedures, um, terminal instrument procedures, known as the TERPs, um, no, they will not change at all. Again, it's only an airspace change. It will not affect any procedures or any, any routes um, attached to either airport, okay? So no change to the TERPs. No change, no change, no change. Understood. Thank you. Next question. Why is the FAA having this informal airspace meeting? Well, airspace changes are a rulemaking process. It's a deliberate rulemaking process. And part of that process requires that the FAA host these types of meetings. Uh, the purpose is to gather additional information to be considered in developing any proposal, including this one. Uh, this meeting provides all interested parties from uh, aviation, folks to regular folks like me sitting at home, an opportunity to present their views, recommendations, and provide comments on that proposal. All comments received during this meeting will be considered prior to any revision or issuance of a notice of proposed rulemaking. I'll move on to the next question. How long will it take for the sectional charts to be updated and will communication frequencies be changed or remain the same? Uh, I'll answer part of it and Fernando, if you don't mind helping me out. Uh, so the sectional charts that go through the same process and it, it, they'll provide uh, the information uh, and the time period, uh, Fernando can probably go more into, in depth on that one. Uh, but the communication frequencies won't be changed uh, as we mentioned before. 
Nando, can you help me out with the remaining part? Yeah, reference to the uh, section on chart. For now, there will be no change until this proposal um, goes through the whole process. And uh, once it uh, it becomes official, uh, a, a date in one of the uh, um, sectional cutoff points, and then it will be published. But uh, that will be um, the information will be released uh, in front uh, for the uh, flying, flying community. Okay, uh, thank you. The next question, uh, they're asking for uh, Spanish speakers. So, Carlos, uh, and we're going to need the uh, slide one more time, the same slide that shows the airspace. Uh, do you mind explaining uh, this change in Spanish? Yes, Andy, we'll, lovely, Def, definitely will do. Uh, thanks, gracias a todos los que están presentes eh, y tener esta oportunidad de explicarles este, estas modificaciones del espacio aéreo. Como ya se había este, mencionado anteriormente, la modificación del espacio aéreo, tanto como el Class Delta y el Class Golf Airspace, lo que queremos es que se estandarizar y que se sean para, para parejo las operaciones de noche, tanto como son de día. Así que el espacio aéreo de Isla Grande es de 1,200 pies, no incluyendo los 1,200 pies, se extiende hacia el oeste, 5.3 millas hacia el oeste, un radio de 3.9 y una extensión de casi de 2, 2 millas y media hacia el este. Esa extensión hacia el este la tenemos delegada gracias al espacio, a la, a la Torre de San Juan durante las operaciones del Class Delta, pero no lo tenemos durante el Class Golf Airspace. Y lo que esta modificación lo que pretende hacer es que tenga la misma proporción de espacio aéreo tanto de noche como de día. I think that will, that will, uh, that will conclude my part, Andrés, en uh, Spanish. Thank you, uh, Carlos, I appreciate it. Um, all right, we'll move on to the next question. Fernando, uh, will Isla Grande Tower close if it has late arriving planes? Okay, the, uh, the answer again is uh, no. Um, still the tower is gonna be operate as normal from uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, we'll still be receiving uh, airplanes at uh, any time because uh, when it is light on the tower is closed, um, the airspace uh, basically is worked out for IFR planes coming in at night um, from with uh, someone C rep which is the, uh, in this case, approach control. And uh, yeah, not no changes on the uh, way we operate uh, today. Okay. So the San Juan Center will assume control uh, of aircraft going in and out of Vista Grande uh, when, they're, when the tower is closed. If I heard you correct, right, Fernando? Yeah, yeah, and and BFR as uh, as normal that becomes a uh, class G airspace, so BFRs can come in and out. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the clarification. And while I have you, Fernando, if you don't mind answering another question, uh, what is the class Charlie lateral radar separation standard for visual flight rules aircraft? Okay, so there are uh, many ways of uh, separation in class Charlie airspace. Um, the closest use of air traffic control is the uh, target resolution, which basically uh, means that the uh, radar targets on the uh, radar display doesn't uh, touch each, each other. That's for lateral separation. Um, the other means are uh, visual separation, which basically uh, what means 
is uh, issuing traffic advisories to the uh, aircraft until the aircraft uh, see each other and avoid each other. So basically it's the same thing that uh, is being used at the uh, terminal area today. Again, there's still, everything's gonna remain uh, the same uh, on separation standards. Perfect, Fernando, I appreciate that. Uh, again, please continue to submit your uh, questions in the chat uh, on Facebook or Zoom or, or live social media. Thank you for attending this. Uh, meeting. Uh, the next question has to do with part 107 or uh, drone uh, operations. And I'll pose it to Michelle. Michelle, what effect would this change on part 107 operation? What effect would this change on part 107 operations? Well, uh, the operation over people rule became effective on April 21st from 2021, uh, the drone pilot's operation under part 107 may fly at night over people and move in vehicles without a waiver as long as they meet the, the requirements uh, defining the rules. So airspace authorizations are still required for night operations in controlled airspace under 400 feet. And uh, if you want more information on this, you can just visit the FAA website, uh, which is uh, faa.gov backslash uh, UAS. Thank you, Michelle. Pretty thorough response. All right, uh, we'll move on to the next question. It's about flight instructors, um, Carlos. How can local flight instructors get involved in the FAA safety program in order to help educate others of the consistently changing national airspace. Yes, Andres, actually we, we always encourage uh, the, our local flight instructions to, to maintain a safety environment. Uh, we continue to have a, a strong relationship with the flight uh, district safety office and uh, we encourage them if they have any questions and to address the concerns and we are all, and also to contact the standard uh, standard the flight standard district office for any additional training or or seminars they we, that we actually uh, conduct at Isla Grande and so on. Thank you Carlos. Uh, what is the penalty for violating class Charlie airspace? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, operating contrary to 14 CFR Part 91-130, uh, it's in the Code of Federal Reg Regulations, it will be investigated by flight standards, um, and the penalties could be an administrative or enforcement action depending on the outcome of the investigation. All right, uh, Sonia, question posed. Why do we need this airspace change? Hey, so um, why do we need this um, airspace change? It's always a good question. Um, again, uh, some time ago, uh, there was a class Charlie staff study that was conducted, um, reference to aircraft departing Isra Grande Airport while the tower is closed. Um, we, uh, they were not always establishing two-way radio communications with the San Juan Tower prior to entering the San Juan uh, Class Charlie airspace. And uh, this is why this um, Class Charlie staff study was conducted. So this airspace change in lieu to that was proposed. Um, it will definitely enhance safety by allowing Isra Grande departures to avoid the Class Charlie airspace and give more miles as Carlos just um, mentioned before, about 2.5 miles to the east, correct? Um, and give more miles again uh, to establish communications with the uh, San Juan Tower if they need to enter the class chart airspace. This will add on an additional level of safety um, and thus it will reduce the amount of conflicts between aircraft in the vicinity and um, also mitigate risk. Thank you, Sonia. 
uh, reminder, continue to uh, pour in those questions. Uh, this is a great opportunity uh, for us to have some uh, interaction with you, the community, along with aviation stakeholders and anyone interested uh, and answer some questions, have some direct uh, responses. So continue to put in your questions in the uh, chat or Facebook, uh, on live, social media live uh, and Twitter. Okay. Do air traffic controls support this proposal, Michelle? And uh, yes, uh, as expert in the local air traffic, we have been part of the, the whole process. Uh, with the communication and predictability that exists in Class Charlie, we fully expect that we will be able to provide better service to the, all the aircraft in the area. Thank you for that, Michelle. And again, uh, just to reiterate what, what Michelle mentioned earlier, and I think several people, uh, several of the panel members uh, mentioned, this change is part of, partly because of the operational need and air traffic has been a vital part of this creation. Uh, this creation, which is a proposal, obviously. Um, so but there definitely has been support uh, and also their intellectual input. All right. Is the FAA conducting an environmental review to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act? Yes. Um, as with any change to airspace, uh, that's part of the process. It's one of those things that we do each and every time we introduce uh, something new into the national airspace system. And the FAA has reviewed the potential environmental, in, environmental impacts associated with this proposed airspace change. Uh, the FAA will review input from the public, complete the NEPA process or that uh, National Environmental Policy Act process prior to implementation of the proposed airspace change. It, it's something that we do all the time uh, for any change. So we uh, consider what impact it will have on the community wherever it's being introduced. Thank you again for that question. We'll move on to uh, a comment to us uh, from YouTube. A YouTuber says, awesome to see you're holding a public meeting about this. I would love to see more live streams like this. Exclamation mark. <laughs> You may follow uh, the FA on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to find out about future live streams. We appreciate your feedback. And this is all about you, the community, uh, and having uh, interaction with you. So thank you for that. Michelle, I have a question for you. During non-TAU operations, how will we not have a repeat of the incident of a jet departing straight out and not being in contact with Sam One Tower. Well, um, this change will allow pilots to establish supervisor communication with the Sam One Tower prior entering the class Charlie. So it gives them a little bit more time. It will also allow pilots to turn uh, before entering class Charlie airspace so it can mitigate this situation. Thank you for that, Michelle. Uh, next question, are you making this airspace change so the airlines can operate more flights? Either a similar question was posed, uh, and I believe Sonia had the right answer. So, uh, Sonia, if you don't mind, are you making this airspace change so the airlines can operate more flights? Sure, no problem. Um, no, definitely no. Um, the, this proposed airspace change will not increase the demand at the airport, but that's not what we're expecting. That's not why this is being, this is being done. Um, however, it will enable air traffic controllers um, to better manage the traffic that we operate at this time. And maybe if um, anything else uh, is to come. So we designed this airspace to allow flights to safely and more efficiently arrive at and depart from San Juan and, and Isla Grande Airport. It is really not designed to accommodate a higher number of flights. That's not the intent. 
Um, the FAA, again, is, is not responsible for the demands of the market when it comes to how many airplanes um, there are. Our job is to safely manage the system as a whole. Okay, thank you, Sonia. How do you know the airspace will be safe? And uh, probably tie into a couple of you, if you don't mind. How do we know that this airspace is safe? Let's start off with uh, Fernando. Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Um, how do we know this uh, change will be safe? Well, right now the airspace is safe. Basically the proposal is to give a little bit more of space to make it safety air. Um, since both in this in this uh, area, the class Delta and Charlie, they meet close to the departure point of runway Niner from Isla Grande, which basically means that anybody departing Isla Grande they don't have much time if they're not and uh, want to enter Class Charlie airspace to turn or either contact San Juan Tower, at least when the uh, tower is like on the tower is closed. So, well, this definitely is gonna increase the safety mostly uh, when it's like on the tower is closed, which is the uh, connector between class uh, Delta and Charlie during the day. So this basically is uh, safety uh, for the pilots flying for the uh, customers. That doesn't mean something else can happen, you know, uh, things happen and we adapt to them as they, they go. But uh, definitely will, this will make the uh, airspace safer. I, I would like also the other panelists to comment on, on it, on their thoughts. I want to make a point to everyone out there that before any change is implemented, there are multitude of studies conducted um, just to make sure that it is safe, not only for air traffic, it's safe for the pilots and the procedures are, are conducted all in a safe way. Um, and everybody is in agreement of that safety that's being that's being over that's being looked at. So rest assured that before this has come to this point, um, many studies have been done and conducted to make sure that it is a safe change for everyone. Also, we would not propose an airspace change until we determine that it is safe for use. I share all my 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 thoughts with my fellow panelists, and uh, it, it's not been a change just because we 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 just pro, uh, propose a change. We have study, consider the mitigations and the effect of it, and uh, we all agree that, that having this modification, the class Delta Golf and the class Charlie, will increase this the uh, the the safety and eliminate any confusion with the airspace in the San Juan and Isla Grande area. I would like to add the uh, the FAA first pr priority always is going to be safety. Uh, efficiency comes second. Well, for Fernando and other panel members, I'll wrap that part up with uh, because safety is paramount, and like Fernando mentioned, uh, our first priority is always safety. We follow a deliberate process through the safety risk management uh, process or system uh, where we convene uh, a panel or a number of panels that includes aviation stakeholders uh, to include air traffic controller uh, to determine what could go wrong and to mitigate it before it's even proposed. So there were uh, several discussions, meetings, and, and finally a panel uh, 
or a number of panels, and we might even have another one, uh, depending on how things go, uh, to ensure that there is a safe uh, design for, uh, put out into the NAS, uh, National Airspace System. So there are a number of different points where safety is considered, reconsidered, and if there is anything that could possibly go wrong, there's mitigation determined prior to uh, the design is finalized. Thank you for that, uh, panel members. Um, and thank you for the questions. This concludes the question and answer portion. I'd like to thank everyone for attending our San Juan Informal Airspace Workshop. A recording of this event will be available on the FAA's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channels. The FAA appreciates your time and participation in the design of Luis Munoz Class Charlie Airspace and encourages you to send your comments. All formal comments received during the comment period will be considered prior to any revision or issuance of a notice of proposed rulemaking for this airspace. Thank you once again, panel members. I appreciate your time. And this concludes our meeting. Thank you and have a nice evening.